Happy Easter. Christ is risen. Happy Easter, everyone. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. Happy Easter. Jesus is alive. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Happy Easter. He, he is, is risen. risen. Happy Easter. He, he is, is risen. risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is he risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. He has risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 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 Say hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. He, he has risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. He is risen. Jesus Christ, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is alive. Hallelujah. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen, he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. He's alive. Hallelujah. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter. He, he is risen! A very happy Easter! Jesus loves me, Good morning and welcome to Easter Day. Morning worship brought to you from the Salvation Army of Bedlington. Under normal circumstances, we would be meeting in our worship hall and greeting each other with Hallelujah, Christ is risen, and responding with the words, He is risen indeed, as we celebrate the resurrection, Jesus rising from the dead, as he promised he would. But we can still do that as we watch and enjoy the service this morning in our own homes. Other than essential workers, we are all in self-isolation. Life is in lockdown, and for many, particularly those living on their own, it can't be a pleasant experience. We can try and imagine how Jesus' disciples must have felt after his crucifixion. They distanced themselves from the scene. They pretty much self-isolated for fear of recriminations from the Jewish authorities, alone and seemingly abandoned. However, in their case it didn't last long. For early in the morning of the third day, his tomb was found to be empty by Mary Magdalene and witnessed by Peter and John, who, scripture tells us, returned to where they were staying. Mary remained by the sepulchre, sobbing, but she was about to make history, the first person in the world to see the risen Jesus, as she heard her name gently spoken, Mary. Her grief turned to unbridled joy as she recognised him. The story is so well known to us. Freedom, that's what the resurrection means. Freedom to exercise our faith in Jesus. Freedom to have hope in the future. It's a God-given gift. This morning, let's rejoice in the power of the resurrection. Let's share a prayer together. Gracious God, whose Son Jesus calls us by name to follow him, grant us a fresh revelation of the risen Lord. May our worship today reflect our deep gratitude for your love toward us. We pray that your presence will permeate this precious time together and we may experience a God moment. Draw us to yourself and fill our lives with your spirit. Hold us in your love. For all people suffering from coronavirus, Grant healing, we pray. For those who are self-isolating, let them feel your presence and love. We pray for all key workers, especially those serving in the NHS, the emergency services, the military, retail and volunteers who selflessly serve the public on the front line. 
grant them the strength to maintain that vital work. We pray for the government, for their leadership throughout this pandemic. And we pray for ourselves, for wisdom, resourcefulness, adaptability and ingenuity, as in faith we negotiate the challenges of the moment. Amen. John 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, 
she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. Greetings from Smith's household. We are all doing fine, but missing you all dearly. When I was asked to pick a song and share it with you all, it wasn't difficult to choose. And although this, although this song is more associated with Christmas, I still think it's fitting to have this on Easter weekend. It's a song we don't sing very often, but it tells the whole story of Jesus' life, from birth to Good Friday, and then on to his reign over all the world. I first heard the tune while playing in the streets with Wall's End Band during Christmas time. We occasionally would sing the chorus, but it was a few years later when we actually sung the song in a carol service that the words of the verse came to life for me. Such a moving song, but one that has a triumphant refrain. Tis the Lord, a wondrous story. Tis the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet we humbly fall. Crown him, crown him, Lord of all. Let us all remember during these different and difficult times that our Lord God truly is the King of glory and we should put all our trust in him. Oh, sure. 
Good morning, I'm George Miller. I'm here to introduce our next song. The cornerstone or foundation stone is the first stone set in the construction of a masonry foundation. All other stones would be set in reference to that stone, determining the position of the entire structure, giving the building a great beginning to its construction and purpose as it's continually tested by nature and by its function use. It's not uncommon to celebrate that the stone would have an inscription giving a date and time to its setting. Some cornerstones may include time capsules with items of the date and time. Usually these are set behind the cornerstone itself. In scripture Isaiah 28 it says, See I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. There's a great song of the Christian church which I relate to in my Christian faith. The song of hope, of belonging and of testimony and everything that we believe in. There is an assurance that he is my comforter, my all in all and in my faith journey through life's highs and lows. It's a great Easter song but it's also a great anytime church song. It's also a great song of hope and of love. And in this present time of COVID-19, do take time to listen, watch and be blessed.
John's gospel is different than the other three gospels in many ways. It was most likely written quite a few years after Martha, Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote theirs. And by the time we get to John's version of the resurrection, we've already heard it. We've, had, we've gotten through Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They've already shared the good news with us. Jesus is alive. He wasn't in the tomb, he's been raised. You all know that. When Cheryl and I started out this meeting and said Christ is risen, you all said he is risen indeed, didn't you? The resurrection is real. So we might beg the question of John, what possible surprise could there, have, could there be for us today? What news could there be that we haven't already heard? Is it still possible for God to surprise us? John, John would want us to believe that it is. Regardless of how many Easter services you've already been to, God would want us to hold out the possibility that there is still room for a surprising word for you and me today. According to John, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb Easter morning. She finds the stone rolled away and she runs to get Peter and John who then go to the tomb. Inside they find strips of, of linen and the burial cloth. They went back to their homes, but John tells us that Mary remained outside the tomb weeping, weeping. Two angels appear to her. And you think this is, this is where it would be a good place for uh, he is risen to be announced. But instead, they ask her why she's crying. Seriously? They're angels. They know why she's crying. And then the gardener shows up. At least Mary thinks he's, he's the gardener. But we all know that it's Jesus because John tells us that. He just shows up out of the blue, right there, face to face with Mary. But she doesn't know it. She's overwhelmed, blinded by what has taken place. You might be feeling overwhelmed right now, wondering how can how you can possibly get through the coming weeks. You might be short on food, on money, or just short on patience. Mary was overwhelmed right at that point. And John would acknowledge that whatever we're feeling right now, with whatever our human condition is, it's natural and okay. But all those fears and anxieties that, that, that we have could also blind us to the reality of the resurrection. We can be so engulfed in our darkness, and as understandable as that might be right now, that, that we might not even notice the light if it were standing right there next to us. Mary looks at Jesus and doesn't even know it's Jesus. Not only does Mary think Jesus is the gardener, but she thinks he's a thief. She says in verse 15, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go get him. Mary had hit the lowest point in her life, just like many of us may have hit right now. I mean, maybe some of us are at a low point in our lives right now. On top of all the normal things that get us down, all the normal things that can go wrong in life, we're indefinitely locked down. We have no end point to this lockdown. And the complications of that have become all too real for us. Is there a possibility of new life, new hope, and resurrection? Well, Jesus himself says one word that makes all the difference. Mary. He speaks her name. It was at that moment when Mary heard God speak her name that the fog lifted, the darkness vanished, 
And for the first time in a long time, she knew that she was found. Her life might have felt lost and confused, but God found her. That is surprising news for us today. This is Easter. The good news for us is that God will stop at nothing to find you. God is in the search and rescue business. This morning, even though you have felt lost in the dark and blinded by grief and fear possibly, just listen. God is calling you by name and you have been found. There was a woman who had a metal detector on the beach, sweeping the, the fancy little gadget left and right, listening for the beeps. Every once in a while, she would stop. She would pull out her big strainer basket, hunch down and scoop up a big chunk of sand and start sifting, looking for stuff that people had lost. Then the woman did something amazing that you wouldn't believe. She stopped and pulled off what appeared to be her wedding ring, probably the most valuable possession she had on her at that moment. She closed her eyes, turned her head, then threw the ring down into the sand with enough force to bury that ring down below the surface. Then she picked up that metal detector again you see, what, what she was doing was making sure that her metal detector was working properly. She was so intent on finding all of the other lost treasure out on that beach that she was willing to give up her most prized possession just to make sure that her system of search and rescue was working properly. Since the beginning of human history, God has been on a search and rescue mission searching for every lost soul, for every person who has been wandering in the dark, for every person who has been standing outside the tomb, weeping, weeping, weeping. God has been so intent on finding every single lost one of us that God was willing on Good Friday to let go of the most prized possession that God had, God's very own self, in his son, Jesus Christ. There, and there he was on, on Good Friday where God threw Jesus down into the earth and buried him in a tomb, in the sand of human condition to take on all of the lostness and darkness that we feel. But then on Easter morning, God took out that strainer basket. When God raised Jesus to new life, it proved that God could find anything and anyone, including you. After that woman slipped her wedding ring back on her finger, she picked up the metal detector again. She walked a few more steps, sweeping back and forth. And then all of a sudden she heard a beep. She picked up the strainer, scooped up a chunk of sand and started sifting. And she found something, something that was lost was now found. This is why John tells us this version of the Easter Gospel. With one word, one utterance of Mary's name, Mary, who was lost, had been found. Surprise! That very same God, that very same Jesus, right now is speaking your name too. It might be hard for you to hear it, you're deafened by your trouble. You're blinded by your darkness. You, but if you listen carefully this morning, unmistakably, plainly, and clearly, God is speaking your name, and you have been found. The only question we need to answer now is, what are we going to do about it? What difference will it make to be found by God? If you look at, at what Mary said next in verse 16, Mary responded with a word, rabbi, which John reminds us means teacher. It was in that moment that Mary recognized that because she has been found, 
She has a lot of lessons to learn from Jesus, and so do you and I. Mary's response was to say, Rabbi, teacher, I've got so much more to learn from you. Hers was a realization that she had so much more to learn and Jesus had so much more to teach her. Despite your doubts, it is not too late for you to, to grow in your faith and follow Jesus, your teacher and Lord, regardless of your standing in life or how small your faith might appear to be. It's a good thing we heard from John today. John would want us to acknowledge that it's good to be found and it's good to hear God speak our name because then, now, and from now on, we can believe exactly what Mary said. I have seen the Lord. Let's pray together. God, this is good news. We are expecting it. We just weren't expecting how much we needed to hear it or the way in which you were going to share it. So God, thank you for speaking it to us in the most personal way possible through the speaking of our names. God, we confess to you that we have felt the dark, lost, confused, blinded. But today the message is unmistakable. You have found us. You've given up your most prized possession to find us. And for that we are grateful. Continue to guide us as we take whatever the next step is along our journey of faith so that every day can be a resurrection day, that every pulse and heartbeat of our life can speak to the glory of hallelujah. You are risen and you raise us to new life indeed. I pray all these things in Jesus' name, our risen Lord, amen. Thank you.